Hello and welcome to Matthew Reads, I guess, and you know, now I'm not gonna lie, like, the Darius the Great books, you know, by Deep Coram are in fact some of my favourites of all time, so you know, I was really excited to get Kiss and Tell by Deep Coram as well. That was that point, that's all, <laughs> that's all there was to that point. Oh wow. Uh, anyway, so like, my copy of the book doesn't have its, like, blurb on the back, you know, the blurb is like... It's on like the first page or like on the inside of the cover, sort of like how it is on hardbacks. Like that isn't a complaint or anything, I just thought it was an odd choice for like a paperback. It was kind of like, like I looked and I was like, hmm, no blurb question mark and then I obviously opened the book and I was like, oh it's there. It was just one of those that was just like, okay. Okay. Still, I mean, you know, as I always do reading from my notes of the blurb, you know, Miss Blurb, she says that Hunter never expected to be in a boy band, let alone the kind whose, you know, exploits get splashed across tabloid covers, but now his band, Kiss and Tell, i.e. the title, <laughs> is on its first major North American tour and life in the limelight is harder and more complicated than he ever could have imagined. So very much slay on that front, you know, that's to be expected. You know, he's in the spotlight, there's going to be that for conflict, all that sort of jush. And then it goes on to say that he can handle, you know, dressing up in whatever the label wants him to be dressed up in and pretending that he never has sex. But he also likes finding community in the queer kids that come to the meet and greets. But then details of his personal life spill and that risks ruining basically the image that has been created for him essentially. It's very much that tease. And I mean, you know, the blurb does mention a little bit more. It does mention that he plays the perfect gay boy for the camera, you know, which, you know, after I read If This Gets Out, it was like, it was nice to, you know, read essentially like the boy band book that lets the gay member be openly gay. But yeah, then the blurb finishes up by saying that details of Hunter's personal life leak out online, and then essentially that is what you know, who risks ruining everything for him. And then, oh, it also risks ruining his new relationship. I should mention that as well. And, you know, it says that on the blurb. That's not me spoiling anything, by the way. Right, and I know I've been reading from my notes a lot, but I've just written a lot. I can't help it. Okay, so in terms of Kiss and Tell, like, the group itself, we've got Hunter, the main character. There's Ashton, Ethan, Ian, and Owen. So slay on that front as well. But yeah, the book straight up starts with like a little announcement that tells us that Kiss and Tell's tour is sold out and that Hunter had promised, you know, 50 front row tickets to be given to LGBTQ youth, which is honestly, you know, slay mode was engaged right from the outset for Kiss and Tell, I can't lie. And you know, then like a page later, there's this like gossip bulletin that, you know, tells us that Hunter has essentially, well, not essentially, Hunter has broken up with his boyfriend Aiden, who is the twin brother of Ashton in the band. And then the last bit before the first chapter even happens is like the set list. And like this band's most well-known song is called Poutine. And you know what? That is another issue where they were engaged in slay mode once again. You know, if y'all are Canadian, lean into that Canadianism. Why not? Anyway, then chapter one, um, Hunter mentions his swamp pass, which... You know what, if you have swamp pass, let the world know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, after the meet and greet, the drummer of, like, the opening act, which I believe was called, like, Parquet, but, like, the drummer, his name is Kyvan, basically comes up to Hunter and, you know, tells him that he appreciates what he's doing with all the queer youth, and then he also tells Hunter that he himself is gay, so Hunter is obviously, like, slay mode again. Like, I'm not the only gay person on this tour. <laughs> And you know, then like, when he gets home from like, the first show that they do, he's essentially got writer's block from being so miserable from his breakup with Aiden. And you know, the context of this is that it seems like they're one of those, you know, boy bands that have been like, essentially manufactured by, you know, labels, even though they are friends. And basically they're being pressured to, you know, work on the next album while they're touring. It's very much like that era of... I want to say like One Direction and Little Mix where they were like churning out an album every year. Either way, uh, then Hunter and Kyvan end up hanging out in public and because they are both gay that obviously means that the tabloids, you know, immediately pick up on the fact that oh, they're obviously together and they definitely can't just be friends that are hanging out. It's definitely not that. And you know, I will say for a little bit of context and I 
guess sort of a spoiler but also not really that Hunter and Kyvan do end up dating and like when I say it sort of is sort of isn't spoilers like the blurb literally says that Hunter gets into a new relationship but and then like obviously Hunter and Kyvan getting together that also happens like early on in the book so I feel like it's it's safe to say that and it not be spoilers Anyway, yeah, um, I already, you know, I already mentioned if this gets out by, you know, Kale Dietrich and Sophie Gonzalez. So, you know, Kiss and Tell obviously isn't the first book that I've read where, you know, the main character is basically in the spotlight and the spotlight in the media and all that jush. And, like, I personally, I enjoyed the way that, like, the media and the behind the scenes stuff was, like, incorporated into this book. Because it was like, you'd get a bit of, like, the story and then you'd get, like, chunks of media, like stuff that people have written online like you know press junkets even like emails between like staff at the label as well it was like everything was woven together and it like pushed the story forwards if, like for example you'd see an email that was talking about like an event that would be you know upcoming and then we'd see like that event happen like in the story essentially and you know obviously because in this book they are of like everyone's like not everyone, but, like, the guys in the boy band, they're all, like, 17, so they are, like, you know, teenagers, literal children. There's, like, this one bit in between the chapters that is essentially a BuzzFeed quiz that was, like, I've written it down, hold on, it says, make poutine and we'll tell you who your kiss and tell soulmate is. And then whoever it is, do, you know, doing the quiz, Hunter comes up, and then it gives, like, the most vague, surface-level, like, bland description of like Hunter based on essentially the image that's been created of him you know so I mean for this next section it's going to be purposefully vague just so I can avoid spoilers just because I'm going to be talking about the story so I do apologize if this comes across as like I guess annoying or unhelpful, but I am trying to be vague to avoid spoilers but obviously like the blurb you know mentions basically how Hunter's label wants to present this image of him essentially being like pure and having never had sex and like the bits that you know of his personal life that do leak out they essentially expose ooh big scary turns out 17 year olds actually do have sex and then like from this the book does proceed to do a few things like at one point there's a couple of girls that like mention you know from what came out of the leak that it's like gross Reno you know, referring to what Hunter, Hunter did as gross, despite the girls being fans of Kiss and Tell. And it's the whole thing of, like, how the world is, you know, essentially okay with gay people existing and with gay people being present in the media, so long as they don't do anything gay or so long as they're not, like, too gay. And I don't remember exactly how it was phrased in the book, but it was something along the lines of, you know, queer people exist in the media for the heterosexual gays most of the time. It's like, they can be there, but like I said, they can't be like, too gay. You know, one character also mentions how like, sex sells, but it's only straight sex that sells, and you know, if it's gay sex, that calls for a rebrand. You know, this book also does highlight, you know, how disgusting certain parts of the internet are. Like, as a reminder, you know, like I mentioned, the members of Kiss and Tell, they are 17, and you know, some of the tweets that get included, obviously, they were included on purpose, you know, to purposefully show this. You know, they were straight up explicit, and you know, full on just not things you should be tweeting about a minor, things that would probably get you thrown in prison if you said them in person and got caught. And then, you know, when talking about, like, the ages of characters in YA, I feel like that is something that readers of YA, some not always, but, like, sometimes forget. Or maybe, like, people who don't, you know, regularly read YA. They'll, like, complain, like, they'll complain about the characters being childish when the characters are, like, literal children, like, minors. And, like, the thing is, it'll, it's when, like, people read YA, and I feel like... The, the characters in YA, because they are, you know, young and they are children, they will make mistakes and because of their age, they won't know better. And because of that, obviously, like, an older reader who wouldn't make the same mistakes that these younger characters would make may think that the characters are stupid and, like, immature and see that as a negative. 
But that's because obviously them as an older reader, they know better than the characters do. And like when it comes down to it, you know, in this book, obviously all of the characters like the guys in Parquet and Kiss and Tell, you know, they are both young and they're in like they're like they're all young rather and they're in like this high essentially this pressure cooker situation so obviously because they are young they're not going to be like in the best control of their emotions hey queen girl you have done it again and so obviously like the stupid things that they do or say like because of their age because they don't know better is obviously gonna you know make for a cause of conflict as it does in this book and i mean there was a point in there and i hope i managed to make it <laughs> But yeah, to keep talking about age for a second, I think that obviously, well, it's not even I think, that was part of what made him flawed. And I don't mean that as a negative, I mean literally like flawed as a character. And I want to specify, I mean that like he's flawed as a person, not a character, if that makes sense. Like he's 17, trying to navigate fame and his like feelings and adolescence all at once. So obviously that's going to be a lot for anyone. So, like, even in the moments where he is, you know, let's just say not being the nicest, being a little bit irritated, being a bit of an ass, that's sort of, like, you know, just what makes him, I guess, more of a well-rounded character. And, you know, as my final, I guess, like, my final point, I feel like you can tell, you know, when a queer story is written by a queer person... And, like, this is one of those books that you definitely can tell that. Because I feel like there are some jokes that, like, only queer people would make. Uh, that, like, let's just say straight people would probably be like, Ooh, would it be okay for me to make this joke? You know, one such joke in, like, in this book is, you know, referring to any minor convenience as homophobia. And you know what? It's true. Like, my copy of the book, you know, it's got water damage. That was an act of homophobia. But yeah, that's it. Um, You know, I enjoyed this book. Like, I feel like Kiss and Tell had a lane that it wanted to drive down. And it stayed in that lane and, you know, got to its destination, you know, on time, well before it needed to. I mean, I guess if I had to complain about anything, it would be that... Ironically, even though my copy of the book is 378 pages, I would have liked it to be a little bit longer. And I say that just because of, like, how regularly there was, you know, the inclusion of, the, like, the media outlets and all that. That probably cut into some of the time that could have been spent with the characters. But I mean, saying that, even that's not, like, big enough of an issue for me to complain about it anyway. But yeah, that's it. Um, you know, let me know what you thought if you've read Kiss and Tell. Let me know, have you read any other Adib Koran books? And, you know, feel free to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you'd really like it. Honestly, that's it. Okay, bye.